Our next speaker is Sarah Bookman. Sarah is a third year medical student at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. In 2009, she wrote a thesis based on her research on the economic implications of Lyme disease, clearly an area where we need more study. She will be presenting a summary of the results of that work. Thank you, Sarah. Hello, good morning. My name is Sarah Bookman, and as mentioned, I'm a third year medical student at Georgetown University. All right, let's get started. As you all know, Lyme disease is a very serious illness that, if misdiagnosed, can become crippling very quickly. Um, so through my research, I'm hoping to find a, a way to scientifically quantify the human costs associated with the misdiagnosis of Lyme disease. There are lots of patients out there who begin to question their illness, question their sanity, and, my, and through my research, I'm hoping to empower these pa patients and legitimize the struggles that they go through while misdiagnosed. Uh, eventually, I hope to create an effective policy um, to help patients who are stuck in this unfortunate situation. The methods I used for my research was a questionnaire consisting of 16 questions. Uh, they are basic questions that I thought would cover nicely the experiences that patients who are misdiagnosed with Lyme disease would face. Uh, the respondents I got um, mainly through ILADS physicians, through lots of patient advocacy, advocacy groups, and I ended up with over 450 different patient responses, which I believe creates a st statistically significant uh, group of data for us to work with here to really understand what patients are going through. So for the purposes of time, I'm going to skip through the questions. They're on the slides later if you want to get the printed out version, and just skip right to the results of my research. The first question I asked essentially was, was the first doctor you want to see the one to diagnose your Lyme disease? And as you can see from the results here, overwhelmingly the answer is no. 42, uh, excuse me, 92% of people were not diagnosed the first time around of the patients I sampled. The other 8% of people did end up sticking around with their primary physician uh, in order to get diagnosed with Lyme disease. But interestingly, the majority of those patients had to advocate for themselves, say, you know, doc, I really think that this is Lyme disease, and really push for themselves to say, listen, I really think that there's a problem here. Will you please check, check out this test? I did some research on the internet. Um, another fifth of the doctors who ended up diagnosing the patient that came in with Lyme disease uh, totally ignored the IDSA uh, lab test standards and just went on a clinical diagnosis alone. You know, you got the swollen joint, you got migrating pain, you got, you were, you might have been bitten by a tick, we are in Connecticut, and they diagnosed the patient that way, not through IDSA standards. Um, another fifth were just kind of the uh, primary care physicians who like a good puzzle and were persistent and worked through very patiently um, in order to diagnose the patients. Um, another handful saw that their patients were really sick and said, okay, I'm going to throw you know, the whole kitchen sick in here. I'll put the you know, Lyme disease teeter in here and ended up accidentally diagnosing it. Um, uh, one of the doctors actually had Lyme themselves and, and so came up with the response that way. Um, as for those patients uh, who were not diagnosed by the first physician they went to see, who are the doctors that are misdiagnosing patients? As you can see here, there are a whole host of doctors that tend to misdiagnose patients, but uh, the most common physicians to do this are the primary care physician. What's the difference between primary physician and secondary? Primary is the first primary care physician they went to see, and second are the second, third, fourth, fifth primary care physicians that people went to see. Um, also, you can see rheumatologists, neurologists, um, alternative medicine physicians, PAs, 
uh, infectious disease doctors themselves, a whole, a whole host of doctors that are responsible for these misdiagnoses. And what are the diagnoses that people are getting instead of you have Lyme disease? Interestingly, far and away, if you look at the first three columns, those all add up into the fourth column, which is some form of it's all in your head. You're faking it. These are not real symptoms. So I think that's really important for us to see. As a group of physicians, the biggest mistake we can make is to not trust our patients. When they come in and tell us there's something wrong, to, even, if, even if we don't think there is something wrong, really give them the benefit of the doubt. Other diagnoses, understandably depression, if you are ill for a long time and no one's acknowledging you, one does become depressed. Chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, multiple scler sclerosis, uh, a number of other um, misdiagnoses and the list goes on. Um, here a whole host of other diseases, these are less frequent. Uh, frequently diagnosed here and you can see at the top it says he said that I screamed as a baby and then subsequently forgot how to talk. These are the diagnoses that are being chosen over Lyme disease. Um, this is my all-time favorite diagnosis a patient had. I was diagnosed as a dis depressed single mother. He told me to buy a new dress and go out on a date. Being a nurse, I ask if depressed, uh, depression caused swollen hot joints, various rashes, and memory loss to the point of not remembering my daughter's name. <laughs> Number of doctors visited before properly diagnosed. The average was nine. The median and mode were six and five, but uh, a lot of the data I had to throw out, I had very stringent standards for my data and a lot of patients um, were saying upwards of 20, but because they didn't give me specific, a specific number, I chose not to put it in my data pool, but uh, just know that um, one has to go through a lot before finding that doctor to listen and you can understand why they're, why they're so grateful to be heard when they finally come and see you all. How did your doctor diagnose you? Well, uh, the vast majority of doctors through my research actually used um, Lyme literate uh, standards as proposed by ILADS. Um, the other labs are people who didn't specify um, and you can see that a lot of people actually just had to go on clinical diagnoses alone um, and very rarely were the IDSA standards enough to uh, diagnose these patients and eventually get them better.